This video is sponsored by Empower. It's this cool app that can help you save and budget your money. Download the app for free. Link is down in the description below. What's up you guys? Welcome to the video. My name is Brandon. And in today's video, uh, some of you guys have been requesting, we're gonna be talking about the TFSA. Uh, the TFSA is actually my personal favorite investment account here in Canada. Uh, I do have both an RSP and a TFSA running. Uh, if you haven't got the chance to check out the video that I did last week on the RRSP, I will link that one down uh, in the description for you guys below. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what the TFSA is, uh, how it works, uh, we'll talk about contribution limits, uh, basically everything that you need to know. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you do wanna check out our membership group where you can see my personal investment portfolio, uh, keep up to date with the stocks that we buy, that'll be that first link down in the description below. But uh, to start this video off, uh, what does the TFSA stand for? Well, the TFSA stands for the Tax-Free Savings Account. And this account was actually brought about uh, in 2009 by the Canadian government. It was put in place to basically promote and encourage Canadians to go and put some money aside or save or invest uh, for the future. Uh, but like I said, uh, 2009, it's still a relatively new account. And I know that the name does say savings account, uh, but the TFSA is an investment account. So within the TFSA, you're gonna be eligible to hold uh, pretty much any security, stocks, bonds, uh, mutual funds, ETFs, you name it. They can all be held within this investment account. And here as an example, uh, if you're new to investing, you're looking to get started, uh, if you were to sign up through Quest Trade, which by the way, uh, this is a question that I get on my channel all the time, this is the broker that I'll typically recommend for Canadians. It's what I'm personally using right now. The first question that it asks you uh, during the signup process is what type of account do you wanna open? And as we can see here, one of the options is the margin account. Uh, so this would be considered our non-registered account. And then we have our two registered accounts, uh, the TFSA and the RSP over to the right. And although the TFSA doesn't have the word registered in the name, like it's not like the registered retirement savings plan, it would still be considered a registered plan. And again, for anyone that didn't tune into the last video, the reason that they're called registered plans is because they're registered with the CRA, uh, the Canada Revenue Agency, to provide us with these specific tax benefits. And very much like the RRSP, the TFSA is also a tax sheltered plan. Uh, that's kind of where it gets the name from, tax-free savings account. And what that means is that any income that you receive within the TFSA, you don't have to pay taxes on. It's kind of sheltered from tax. So if, for example, you bought a stock in your tax-free savings account, if that stock's doing really well, it's grown and you decide to sell it, you don't have to worry about paying capital gains on that. Uh, also, that goes for if you held, let's say, a bond in your TFSA, the interest that you're receiving from bonds, completely sheltered from tax. You don't have to worry about any of that. Now, there is a, kind of a unique thing when it comes to dividends in your TFSA. And this is something that a lot of people actually don't know. But for the most part, uh, if you're receiving dividends, if you hold a stock that pays a dividend, uh, which is basically like a cash payment uh, every quarter, typically, for the most part, those dividends are gonna be sheltered from tax. However, if you're holding a US stock that pays US dividends, those dividends are actually subject to a 15% withholding tax. Uh, so that is something very minor, uh, but it's something that a lot of people don't know. So technically speaking, yeah, Canadian dividend paying stocks are taxed more favorably. I mean, they aren't taxed, but they're more favorable to hold rather than receiving uh, US dividends within the TFSA. And uh, that is just a very minor detail. On a side note, I personally do hold uh, a bunch of US stocks in my TFSA. So personally, it's not enough to defer me or deter me from uh, buying US stocks. But like I said, it is just something to keep in mind.
Now, important note here, you do have to be 18 or older to open up a TFSA. So it's not based on your income, uh, like the RSP, it's strictly an age thing. And actually here, where I'm from in British Columbia, you have to be 19. So if you're right on that bubble, uh, I'd suggest just like quickly Googling, uh, depending on what province you're from, just to double check that. Uh, but basically, on your 18th birthday, uh, or 19th here, on your birthday, you're going to be eligible to contribute uh, up to the full year's contribution limit for that year. That probably didn't that probably didn't come out well, uh, but very much like RRSPs, TFSAs do have contribution limits. There are unfortunately maximums that you can put in. Otherwise, people would just pile as much money as they could into these tax sheltered plans. And this is a grid uh, on the screen here of the TFSA contribution limits. So again, uh, looking at the bottom of this uh, chart here, the TFSA was brought about in 2009 and the annual limit at that time was $5,000. So that was the maximum that you could put in. Uh, now, of course, you don't have to use the full amount and anything that you didn't use that would be carried over to the next year. But at the time, 5K was the max. Now it stayed at $5,000 from 2009 to 2012. Then in 2013, they raised the limit to $5,500. And the reason that they do this uh, is simply to keep up with inflation. Uh, we actually just saw this happen again uh, this year in 2019, where they raised that up to $6,000. So as of today, 2019 contribution limit is $6,000. Now, if you've been 18 or older for a number of years now, well, each of those years that you didn't contribute, all of that space is gonna be available for you. And do notice that in 2015, they did raise the limit up to $10,000, uh, but then they dropped it down uh, the very next year. And if you do wanna go check out your contribution limit, similar to the RSP, you can do so by logging into uh, your CRA My Account. Now, as for withdrawing money out of your TFSA, and this is what I love about the tax-free savings account, withdrawals can be made pretty much at any time and they are completely tax-free. So if, for example, you had $10,000 in your TFSA, if you grew that amount to $100,000, you pick some crazy stocks, you can take that entire amount out, that entire $100,000 tax-free. And what's even better about the TFSA is that the money that you withdraw from your TFSA, you can recontribute that the next year. So if you took out $100,000 in 2019 this year, next year, you're gonna get that $100,000 of space back plus next year's contribution limit, uh, which is likely gonna be $6,000. Now, just to clarify here, uh, because I don't think I mentioned it uh, prior to this, the contributions to your TFSA are not tax deductible. So it's not like the RRSP where you can deduct it from your taxable income. The money that you contribute to your TFSA uh, is technically after tax dollars. So uh, if you worked and let's say you made $100,000 this year, after paying taxes on that, uh, let's say you net I don't know, uh, seventy thousand, eighty thousand dollars. Let's let's say you net seventy thousand dollars. You've already paid taxes on that. Your contributions are going to be made with those after-tax dollars. Then you can put it in the TFSA. You can buy whatever investments you want. You can let them grow. And then when you take the money out, you're not going to be taxed on that either. Uh, but just keep in mind that it is after-tax dollars that you're going to be contributing. Last little fact, uh, just a minor thing, but just to finish off the video you can actually open as many TFSAs as you want. Uh, you can have a TFSA with Questrade, you can have a TFSA with BMO, uh, you could have 10 TFSAs uh, for all anybody cares, but uh, the limit that you're gonna be able to put in them is gonna be combined. Uh, if you have $20,000 worth of space, you're gonna have to split that between uh, each TFSA. You can't just double up and put 20,000 in this TFSA, 20,000 in the other. Uh, it's gonna be split between however many accounts uh, you decide to open. In summary, like I said, this is my personal favorite investment account here in Canada. Uh, there's not really a whole lot to talk about uh, because it is a very simple, flexible account. Uh, and that's why I think it's so perfect for beginners. Uh, there's definitely not as much details to go over as the RSP when we're talking about tax deductions. This is just a very, very simple account where you can pop money in, 
after tax dollars, let them grow, uh, feel free to withdraw money whenever you want, and then be able to recontribute re that money the next year. Uh, and this is why this account is so great uh, for pretty much anybody out there because of that flexibility that it provides. Uh, if you're putting money away, and let's say you don't know, you know, maybe down the road you're going to need that for uh, a down payment or you're going to need it to buy a new car or to go to school or whatever the case may be. The TFSA allows you to grow that money and invest it in a tax free environment or a tax sheltered environment and you're able to pull that money out with really uh, no consequences compared to the RRSP. And that's really what makes it my favorite account. Like I said, it's the account that I would recommend uh, for pretty much any beginner here in Canada. I really don't have too much more to say other than it's a pretty great account. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you guys have any questions or comments uh, for me, leave them down below. I'll do the best that I can to answer them. Uh, but like I said, yeah, this should be a short, quick video. And hopefully that did give you a good breakdown on the TFSA. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, guys, I post a video every Monday. So subscribe. Uh, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. And like I said, if you do want to check out our membership group, it's that first link down in the description below. Uh, as always, I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.